Hey folks, uh, VM Explorer here, and in uh, part two of that uh, 10 gig NAS build, we are actually going to take this uh, lovely Synology 1621 apart from start to finish. So we're going to probably focus on the fans here a little bit, then we're going to move into the outer case or vice versa, remove that uh, SFP card, and then start breaking this thing down. I hope you enjoy it. If you got any questions, Feel free to leave those comments below. All right, so let's get it going here. A power tool would probably be nice for this, but oh, well, that's okay. We'll manage by hand. Zip. Okay. Oop. Move those off to the side. And we're ready to get the lid off. There's the first thing. Beautiful. All right, let's get that I.O. card out of there. So we'll loosen this screw first. What you'll notice is this guy from behind will slide up real nice. Put that line there. Remove our Synology card. Out he comes. Easy peasy. All right, let's flip it around. The only other thing I have in here are some NVMEs. These guys are going to want to come out anyways. Uh, so we are going to get in there. You can see them right there. Little clip. Yep, little clip right there. Up. And a little wiggle. They come right out. Piece of cake. All right. So let's flip back around. And we'll take a look at those fan bays. It's probably one of the more common failure pieces in systems, right? Are those fans, or maybe you just want to clean them. You know, so that would be my take. It's okay, what does this look like? You know, I get a lot of dust in this unit. I could pull it apart, but maybe I want to clean out these fans or clean out the other devices in here and all the other dust that you know, collects in this unit. So, okay. Here comes the fan bay. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, those four screws are out. We'll put them in order. Oh, it comes out pretty nice, pretty easy. Look at that. Little tug. All right, we got two little connectors right down there, as you can see. No big deal. One on the left, one on the right. Okay, let's get this guy out. So that was pretty easy. Not too bad, huh? Let's see if we'll get those fans out. All right, let's put that aside and move on to something else. Uh, other common failure parts. So I would guess probably the power supply would probably fail at some point, right? So let's get that guy out. Or maybe you want to clean it. Okay. Okay, looks like one right there, maybe. Okay, so it looks like there's a little clip right here for a zip tie. So I'm going to need to get something to cut this guy off and we'll get going again. All right, so being careful not to get any of the wires there. You can see we can get right on this guy and clip that out. There goes a retainer. Looks like we have one on the bottom too. Let's wiggle it. Huh. It's actually a screw right there, or a bolt probably. 
not really a screw. Get that guy up. All right, now you can see he's loose. Okay. So it looks like we got another zip tie right here. It's pretty close, so careful cutting that guy. All right. Here starts to come the power supply. Okay. So it looks like we got a clip here and then two clips, one underneath and one above. So let's start with the big guy. Looks like a standard ATX cable. Okay, a little wiggle out it comes. Okay, a little wiggle, done. The good thing is you don't have to know that, uh, you know, this one was in the top or the bottom because they're different sizes so you're gonna know right away where that power supply goes and that came out pretty easy that wasn't too too bad you know I wouldn't have had to remove the fans of course to do this but uh, getting this out and the plate and everything uh, made it pretty easy to get into that now there's not much left that we can do but let's take a look at it let's see if we can get down to that system board level because ultimately at some point that may be a priority right and that might be a little more complex. So let's take a look at this unit, see if we can figure out what we got here. Okay. Probably not a bad idea to get this plate out of the way here. This is the memory compartment on the bottom. So now we've got a lot of those mounts you can see there, right? So let's get those guys out. And our chassis is slowly coming apart. Okay, there's that bottom plate now. Let's see what we got here. Oh, that's nice. Hey, look at that. That's pretty easy. Now we're at the motherboard level. So as you can probably see here, there's several, you know, screws here that we can remove and detach from the back plane and then pull the system board out. But looks like there's a riser here, so I'm going to pause for a minute come up with a plan and back at it all right so i think what i'm going to do is go after i looked at this plate here this is the system board you know but you can kind of see there's some blockers this these are those stands that kind of you know for the drive cage here right um they kind of go through the motherboard so if i remove these and try and move the motherboard out i'm going to get blocked right here or blocked right here, it, it's not going to move. It wants to come this way towards me or at an angle, which we're probably not going to be able to get. So I think what I'm going to do is pull off the front bezel. It's going to come off anyways, and I think that would probably be the next best step. Of course, I'm not doing this to Synology guides. They gave me this to play around with, so we're going to do it. All right, let's get in there. So what we're looking at is these screws right here, and I don't know if I have enough angle here or not with this bulky screwdriver, but let's see what we can do. So it looks like there might be two holding this on, but we'll see. Yeah, I think that's it. Just two. So 
Now it comes. Now let's do the other one. We're going to disconnect this cable here. Now it's held on with a little bit of tape, which is always fun. Let's unlock it as it will. It kind of has those old style push down connectors, which are nice because that holds it in place really well. All right, especially a tight little guy like that. All right, let's get this one out. All right, so this should start to come off now. Good. Now we can see that connector here. So what we're going to do is that tape is going to have to come off. Oh, well. No big deal. Let's get that off there. It's that fiber tape, which holds pretty darn good. Okay, and there goes the front bezel. All right, so now we got our front bezel off. We get a different look at this guy, all right? So there it is. Okay, so let's plan out our next plan of attack here. All right, so what I think we're gonna do here is pull off this back bezel now, which appears to be attached by a couple screws here. As far as I can tell, there's the other one. And that'll give us access to that system board. I already went ahead and removed the system board screws, bolts. <laughs> Actually, they do look like uh, screws. These are more like machine bolts. We are stripping this guy down to nothing. Yeah, you can really feel that plate loosening up now. Last one, oh, there it goes. Look at that. Off it goes. There's our plate, back plate, or bezel, whatever you want to call it. And now our system board should almost start coming out of there. Now if you notice here on the networking port there is a metal piece of tape there. So that's for ground. So we're going to want to make sure that we try to take it off easy and get it back on there. So you definitely want to have reestablished that. Oh yeah, it's coming up real nice and easy. It appears to just be foil tape, which is no big deal. So let's peel that up. Now it's off. System board's pretty loose now, because like I said, I got those bottom screws out, and now you can kind of see where the back plane connector is here, right? But over here, we want to be aware of is there's the NVMEs. These are the back side of the NVMEs right here, and it plugs into what looks kind of like a modified uh, PCI-1 bus, but it's pretty loose. Let's see if we can, yep, there it goes. It's dropping right there. Okay, let's flip her around. There it goes. All right, so we've got our system board out now. You get a pretty good look there. Pretty hefty heat sink, right? You've got your uh, expansion port over here. This is where the 10 gig card was. This is where the NVMe port was. This looks similar to a PCI-1, pretty darn close. They call it an M.2 connection. Uh, this is the SATA backplane, right? that connects up into the discs. Of course, your power here on the left, your fan connectors here, uh, and that's about it. There's not much more to this system board. Looks like this could be perhaps the firmware or flash, perhaps. That'd be my guess, right? Okay, let's flip it over. Now we're looking at the back side of the system board. This is the USB port up front, the two memory cards. So it's a pretty simple board. Nice heat sink. <laughs> I mean, you can't, you gotta admit that, man. That's a, that's a decent sized heat sink there. And yeah, let's take a look at our chassis. Now you can see right here, here's your connector for your backplane. And then on the side, your connector for your NVMe that plugged in there, backplane here, right? And then flip around. 
and you're good to go. The only thing left here would be to take out the back plane, which I don't think I'm going to do because not a whole lot of point in doing that. But it looks like there's two, you know, bolts here and two on the other side, and then this plate will come out, and then we're have completely disassembled it. So, folks, uh, that's it. I hope you did enjoy uh, this uh, quick disassembly video. Uh, now I got the fun of uh, reversing the video and putting it all back together. Uh, if you like these videos, do me a favor and click on that subscribe. Please do leave your comments. I always love reading them uh, and responding. And uh, I do hope you have a great day.